Hi everyone, um, thanks for joining this evening. Um, I think we've probably got everyone now, so um, I'll make a start. My name is Georgia Dion Kleinder. I'm the Marine Conservation Officer for the Northwest Wildlife Trusts. Um, I've been with the Trusts for um, only probably about six or seven weeks now, which time is flying. Um, and hopefully we'll be, or will be here with for the next five years. Um, working across um, the area and luckily enough for me that involves um, some work with SEALs. So this it talk is part of um, digital event series and um, this is part one of some the SEAL talks. Um, so today I'll be giving you a bit of a background um, to SEAL ecology um, and I'll touch briefly on um, the colony at South Walney. Um, but there's going to be another talk in at the end of November, so on the 30th of November, and that'll explore a little bit more um, the colony that we've got um, and how we do the monitoring down there. So, oops, sorry. So yeah, this talk today will just cover the UK seal species, the um, how to identify between common and grey seals, the distribution and their ecology. Um, again, we'll just briefly touch on the seals at Walney, um, but also how you can get involved. Um, the talk will probably be about sort of 40 minutes and then there'll be some time at, some, um, at the end for questions. So um, please use the chat function um, for any questions that you've got at all. So in the UK, we get two species of seal. So that's the common seal and the gray seal. Um, so the common seal is um, um, so what I'm going to explain now is how to sort of identify between the two. So um, common seals are also known as harbor seals. Um, they are have a pale body with lots of dark spots and they've got a very distinctive V-shaped nostril and large round eyes um, and a short cat-like head. The adults roughly um, get a length of sort of 1.8 metres for the males and the females can reach up to about 1.5 metres. So they weigh between 80 to 100 kilograms and they live um, roughly about 30 years, um, and females tend to outlive the males. Grey seals, on the other hand, um, are much larger. So the bulls, that's the males, can reach about three meters um, in length, and they can weigh sort of roughly between 170 to 310 kilograms, um, the cows, which are the females, are much smaller typically. Um, they get to about 1.6 to maybe 1.9 metres and weigh between about 100 to 190 kilograms. Gary seals characteristically have really large snouts. Um, they, the bulls have larger noses and are less curved than common seal bulls, and the males are generally darker than females with lighter patches. Um, there's often a lot of scarring as well from um, fighting and aggression. They are also, there, so their Latin name um, refers, uh, actually means hook nose sea pig. The common seal is, um, the UK is home to 5% of the uh, dis world's population of the common seal, um, which is about 50% of the population. Um, and there's about 33,000 um, individuals. Their distribution is largely sort of in the Northwest um, and a lot around um, Scotland and the Outer Hebrides. The gray seal um, are among the rarest seals in the world. Their UK population represents about 40% of the world's population and 95% of the EU population. In the UK and Ireland, um, 
there's a, several colonies um, that are really sort of notably large. Um, let me just can sort of show here. So we've got um, Blakeney Point in Norfolk and Donna Nook in Lincolnshire, and also the North um, um, uh, the Farne Islands off the Northumberland coast, and um, also up around Scotland. There's some really good big colonies. Oops, sorry. So if we take a look at some of the common seal ecology, they prefer sheltered locations um, and rocky outcrops. 83% of these in Scottish waters are on the islands in lochs and skerries. And it's often quite hard to tell um, the male and female seals apart. Common seals have much more of a restricted range than grey seals. They tend to travel roughly 40 to 50 kilometres from their haul site, haul out site to forage for food. They may remain at sea for several days and they often spend um, a lot of time diving. They can stay under water for up to 10 minutes. They can reach depths of up to 50 metres. Um, but the way in which common seals hunt is um, relatively poorly understood. They feed on a range of fish species such as sand eel and cod and flatfish, um, but they'll also eat squid and shrimp as well. Females will often return to the site where they were born to breed. So females give birth to a single pup and pups are born in the summer. So usually sort of June and July and their white coat is shed in the womb so that they're ready to swim from birth. This is different to grey seals, um, which I will come on to later. But this means that common seals um, can breed in estuaries, on sandbanks or rocky shores where um, they're they are exposed for only part of the day um, and although they can swim um, the pups are still reliant on feeding from their mother for the first few weeks um, then the pups will grow rapidly they'll double their birth weight um, during the first three to four weeks that they suckle Although we don't have any breeding colonies um, of common seals in the Northwest, there are breeding sites on the Isle of Man and Northern Ireland. Um, so sometimes seal pups can wash up around Barrow and Walney Island, um, and these have been separated from their mothers before weaning. So the picture on the left there is our senior marine conservation officer, Emily, um, as part of a rescue um, team from 2018 um, that rescued a pup and um, they then require rehabilitation. Grey seals are the largest land breeding mammal. And they spend two thirds of their time out sea hunting. Foraging trips can last anywhere between one to 30 days, which is just a huge amount of time out at sea. Um, and they can dive down to depths of 200 meters. Um, they'll feed on a range of fish species, um, mostly benthic or demersal species. So these are sort of um, fish that you find um, on the floor or low down near to the seabed. Um, so things like, uh, flatfish and cod, um, but they're also very um, opportunistic and they'll take the most abundant prey. They need about four to seven kilograms per day per seal. Um, unlike common seals, or a bit different to common seals, um, Grey seals regularly travel over 100 metres from their haul out site. Um, so you can see by these graphs here um, showing, so these are a study from some seals that were tagged 
um, showing their um, tracks over a year. And you can see they really do venture quite a lot, uh, quite a lot further than common seals from their haul outsides. And what's interesting is pups tend to um, venture even further than sort of adults who stay a little bit closer to home. In 2014, um, a study from tag seals found that infrastructure, um, so particularly turbines, and this could also be pipelines, shape the movements of individuals. Um, so this is was actually a study um, of a wind farm off of Germany, um, but it um, shows that there's striking grid light grid like patterns of movement as they concentrated their activity um, to individual turbines. So the dots actually show um, the location of the seal at 30 minute intervals, intervals and the red dots show that um, it's a higher chance of foraging activity and the blue chance it, um, blue spots are when it's likely to be traveling. So this individual here appears to forage at all 12 turbines, um, as well as the meteorological mast that is to the west of the wind farm. So that's just this concentrated area around here. Um, and they must be using um, the structures to forage. Um, and so it really shows how much um, threat or not how much threat, how much impact that human uh, anthropogenic development can have on these animals. And I've got another example here. So this is um, off uh, Sheringham Shoal um, off of Norfolk. Um, and the white points show the structures, including the turbines and the substations, and the seal tracks are shown in red with the yellow pointer again updating every half an hour. So this really shows that um, structures were used for foraging and the directed movements show that the animals could effectively navigate to and between structures. It shows that um, seals are adjusting their uh, behavior to make use of these structures, um, which is really interesting, particularly as um, wind turbine development is increasing. So it just keeps showing that it's using all of the all of the turbines and those patterns are really, really clear. So grey seals spend about a third of their time ashore on sheltered islands, um, remote beaches and rocks. Um, and this time is really, really important for rest, sleeping and digesting food. They will spend longer over winter when they undergo their annual molt. Um, and this is, tends to be a really good time for um, monitoring them as well. So they are polygamous, which means um, there is one fe female will mate with many males. And they are also annual synchronous, which means they return to the same site at the same time each year to breed. And this is often the site where they were born. So females have one pup per year. They mate shortly after weaning the pup and there's a delayed implantation for up to three months. Um, they then have a development stage of nine months, so it means that the pups are born at the same time each year. Um, and this is in the autumn, so um, at the moment it's between sort of October and December, and this varies between sites. But the timing of the births um, varies around the coast, um, so it begins roughly in September in West Wales, um, in October in Western Scotland, and then as late as November in the Barn Islands. Uh, pups 
um, and she can see from this very cute photo um, are very small when they're born with thick white fur. So this is different to the common seal, which um, molt with inside the womb. Um, but this means that they're unable to swim for the first few weeks. So typically around three weeks until they molt all their fur and can enter the water. Um, but this may also means that sites need to be chosen um, where they it's not going to be affected by the tide. So they're often um, the mothers will uh, move higher up to on the beach uh, during for pupping. Pups will feed on the mother's fat rich milk um, and they'll gain about two kilograms per day. Um, which is a huge amount. I'll talk a little bit more about this in detail during the next talk, um, where we'll look um, more in detail at um, the stages of pup development and also how we monitor, monitor them. Um, yeah, so after about three weeks, they'll molt their fur and develop their adult coat. Um, and along with this, they'll get their unique pattern of spots and markings. So each seal will have a different set of markings and you can use it to identify them. So there are some threats to UK seals, um, although like historically seals were hunted for their fur, meat and blubber. But um, Grey seals were actually first mammals to be protected by some of the modern legislation, which is the Grey Seals Protection Act of 1914. Um, and there, all seals are protected in Britain under the Conservation of Seals Act in 1970. However, this doesn't mean that they um, aren't threatened. So a lot of them can be caught in by, as bycatch in fisheries. Um, and also they can get caught up in ghost fishing gear. So this is lost nets, pots and lines that become lost at sea and continue to catch marine life. So you can see obviously by this photo, um, he's um, got some netting tangled around him and that's gonna cause a lot of pain and um, potentially some infection. Seals do get a disease which is known as PDV. It was first identified in 1988 and there was a mass outbreak amongst seals in Northern Europe, which killed over 100, oh no, sorry, not 118, just 18,000 animals. The virus is similar to um, distemper virus caught by dogs and is highly infectious. Um, and it's a bit like a common cold in humans. Um, interestingly, it kind of mainly affects common seals um, and grey seals seem to be less susceptible to the disease. Um, yeah. They also can suffer um, from noise pollution. So um, with the increasing development within the sea, um, which can lead to noise and vibration, um, there can be a lot of disturbance for the seals. Um, and this is also similar to shipping. So these maps here show, these heat maps show how um, the, um, basically the interaction of seals and shipping lanes. Um, and it's, the study that um, produced these said that seals are being temporarily deafened by underwater noise in the UK shipping lanes. Um, they compared the experience of the seals to that of people living amid the din of inner cities. So it can be really obstructive and it can um, damage their hearing quite a lot. So seals are particularly vulnerable to disturbance, um, particularly wary of humans and boats. Um, and seal response to disturbance can range from increased alertness um, to flushing into the water. Now, if this happens a lot, this can cause a loss of resting and digestion time, um, as well as cause a lot of stress for the seal. 
um, and particularly with pupping colonies um, or pupping groups, this can have really bad impacts. So it can include temporary or permanent pup separation. Um, it can disrupt the suckling, um, which would reduce um, uh, or cause an energetic deficiency to pups and also um, physiological stress. So um, it's people don't often realize how much of an impact um, you can have by um, causing these disturbances. As an example here, there's the photos um, at the top will just show that resting before dis disturbance, um, they're all looking pretty relaxed, uh, mostly probably sleeping. Um, and below that in photo B, there's been um, some disturbance of, I think, people walking by. Um, and so some uh, you can see are flushing into the water there. Photo C shows that there's a bigger movement of the seals down into the water and D shows the remaining um, few seals left on the beach um, after the pedestrians have passed. Um, another really big disturbance um, can be from kayakers and um, studies have shown that small paddled craft such as kayaks and canoes are particularly strong stimulus causing seals to flush into the water. So this is thought that it could be due to their low profile in the water, which could possibly resemble features of predators such as orcas and sharks. So they're often really on high alert. So I'll touch now a little bit about the grey seals at South Walney, um, which is one of the only or one of the very few um, nature reserves of the Cumbrian Wildlife Trust um, that is on the coast. Um, historically, it's been very important for its bird's life. Um, so there's the mixed herring and lesser bat Black gull colony, which is of national importance. And there's recordings of over 250 bird species um, down there. Many are passage migrants on their way to or from breeding grounds. Um, there's also, um, uh, it's also reserve, a reserve for its vegetation. So there's vegetated, vegetated shingle, which is an unusual habitat, dunes, grassland and salt marsh. However, one of the most recent conservation success stories is um, the grey seal population. So the grey seals are one of the main species that use the site. Um, however, common seals can occasionally be spotted within the group too. So we've been monitoring the grey seals on the protected beaches of South Wanley informally since the 80s, um, but more regularly since the uh, early 2000s. So a few decades ago, there were sightings of only a couple of seals. But as you can see here, uh, the seal population has gradually grown over the past three decades. There were almost 400 um, observed in 2018. Um, and with this as well, the surveys have also evolved. So volunteer surveys started in 2005. Um, first marine trainees started in 2013. Um, and then there was the introduction of drone surveys and seal, um, the SEAL CAM, which started in 2016. So at first, the colony was just thought to be um, a haul-out haul site. Um, and then one day in 2015, um, the trainees came across um, a very cute uh, little pup. Um, they thought it could have been a fluke, but 
that year there were two pups recorded and every year since there has also been pups. Um, in the second year there were five pups and ten in the third year. Um, so really has become an established breeding colony that hopefully will grow year on year. Since then there's uh, been lots of observations of um, breeding activity and behaviour on the reserve um, and the colony has continued to grow and become more active. Another really interesting thing is that we've seen some encouraging signs um, such as the same seals returning year on year to breed. So you can see here from their distinct markings um, that is this is same um, individual um, that has come back to pup. So as I sort of mentioned earlier, there were there's uh, markings that are unique to every seal um, and which can help to identify. So it's a really positive um, thing that this seal is returning. So during this time, we have also improved our monitoring tools. I'll explain a bit more in detail about how we monitor um, and everything that goes along with that, but that will be in the next talk. So this is just a quick overview on that. But um, but yes, in 2016, um, we started undertaking drone surveys of the seals. Um, and this has been a really, really helpful way of counting the seals, especially as the colony has got larger. Um, you can get a more accurate count um, than you can from the ground, um, especially since you have to, you know, in order to prevent any disturbance, we have to be quite a distance from the seal colony. Um, and it can be very hard to distinguish the uh, each individual seal. But the drone has allowed us to more frequently and accurate count their numbers um, and get a good height without disturbances. And then we can take the still images um, and count them too. So as you can see, it's a really beautiful sight down there. Um, it's also a really good way of keeping track of the number of pups. So the pups are often found away from the main group um, up where the high tide won't reach. Um, and you can see here the red circles um, is um, a number of pups that are up there. So this is a really good year with five pups. And I've also unknowingly caught a birth on film. So here, that's a seal um, giving birth there. In 2016, we also installed a remote seal cam on the reserve with a live link to the website um, and the visitor space on the reserve. So this has allowed us to monitor them even further, but also allow the general or the public to watch the seals up close um, without causing any disturbance. So as I said, they're really prone to um, disturbance and so, the area that they um, can be found on the reserve is actually um, closed to, um, to the public. Um, the seal cam has also been really useful to monitor other, um, or all aspects of the colony. So you can see here, it's evidenced the impacts of marine litter. Um, so in 2017, this um, seal is spotted with something stuck around its neck. Um, but quite interestingly, um, this was taken just a few days ago, and you can see the same seal um, with the same bit of litter around its neck. So um, whilst it's really sad, it's obviously not actually um, detrimental to this seal and um, it must be uncomfortable and there's probably some sores but it's um, not life-threatening. The seal cam can also monitor um, disturbance as well as that picture from the kayaks earlier 
Um, and it also shows some interesting behavior. So this is showing some um, nursery type behavior with young mums and pups um, together, or young pups, sorry, and mums together. Um, sometimes the two pups can even suckle from the same mum. Um, and it also has captured some um, mums getting their pups used to the water for probably the first time. So it's a really good um, way of getting some good insight into the uh, seal colony um, for, and for anyone to have a look. Um, as seals are such charismatic and gregarious animals, they've really helped us get um, out there and spread the word and raise wider conservation issues. So for example, the issues with disturbance and marine litter. The colony has also um, become quite famous. So it's had coverage on Springwatch, Country File, and Northwest um, Tonight, which is um, very exciting. So how can you get involved? Well, you can become a member to help support the work that we do down there um, or make a donation. But also you can get down and visit the nature reserve. Um, at the moment, the nature reserve is open. Unfortunately, the visitor center is closed due to COVID. Um, and whilst uh, it probably wouldn't look quite this summery at this time of the year. This is taken probably in summer, but of the lighthouse down there, it is absolutely stunning and very much worth a visit if you can get out there. Um, it's I felt very lucky the past few weeks um, doing some of the seal monitoring. It's been absolutely stunning mornings down there. Um, so although there's no public access to where the seals are, the general walk and the area is um, really worth a visit. You can also watch the live seal cam. Um, you can take a look at the pups at the moment. So it is pupping season. Um, and so this was just a still captured from a few days ago and you can see the little pup. We've got two pups so far um, that we've monitored or we've seen down there. Um, and the, you can often see these from the seal cam, so it's really worth a watch. You can also sign up to the Living Seas newsletter um, where you can get updates from there. So hopefully that was a very sort of quick um, overview about the UK seals, the common and the grey seals, um, and a little bit about the seals at South Walney. As I say, there will be a, another um, talk where I'll talk a little, a lot more in depth um, about the colony um, and Walney and also how we monitor, monitor them and get you a bit of an insight, um, especially since you kind of can't get down directly down to the seals, but um, hopefully it will give you a closer look at them. So thank you. Do put any questions uh, in the chat. And um, yeah, the next talk will be on the 30th of November, but I will take a look at the chat to see if there's any questions now. So, So a question from Sue is, do the turbine charts indicate that the fish are attracted to the structures increasing the foraging activity? Um, so yeah, that's a really good question. And it's so tend, um, st structures in the sea tend to um, gather, um, gather life. And so it would indicate that there's um, a lot more fish around um, around the turbines and which is why they kind of can concentrate their um, foraging activity around there. Um, and a question from Mike is, how can you see live footage of the seal cam? I will pop in the chat or at the end of the session, um, a link to the seal cam, but it's also on the Living Seas Northwest um, page. So there are plenty of, um, 
sorry, the the page is just um, can be found from from the Living Seas Northwest there. Um, a really good question from Sophie. So she said that I went on a boat trip to see the seals at Blakeney Point a few years ago. Are these sorts of trips bad for the welfare of the seals? Um, I think this is probably a really interesting point and quite a tricky one to understand. Um, it very much depends on how these sorts of companies are run. Um, anything that's getting too close, um, which will disturb the seals, um, is certainly um, bad for the welfare of seals. Um, but also it can, can, these sorts of trips can also be beneficial because um, they increase awareness. So it's got to be managed um, very carefully. So it kind of depends. Um, but anything that's going to get too close to the seals and if you can see any sort of alertness or disturbance on their behalf then it's probably not too good. Um, so we've got um, from Kate, are they solitary hunters? Um, they seem to be like being social on the beach, but is that the case when hunting? But to be honest, I don't know. I think they are solitary hunters, um, but I think there's quite little known um, about their hunting behavior. Um, and so I think there needs to be a lot more sort of studies on that. Um, question from Mike, what predators are there for the seals? So this often um, often can be killer whales um, and sharks. So um, not so much in sort of Cumbria, but um, certainly up in Scotland, you get some killer whales. Um, and so, yeah, they are the main predators. Um, there's a question from Jeremy, Jeremy, sorry, um, is the growth rate of the seal population at South Walney typical or do we not know because uh, we don't have any comparative data? Um, generally around the UK, I think the seal populations are increasing. Um, and so I, there's definitely, there are quite a lot of um, monitoring of different populations. Um, I don't know in terms of the actual growth rate um, how similar it is, but I know um, a lot of the colonies around the UK are increasing. Uh, question from Gillian, do turbines contribute much to underwater noise? Uh, yes, they will do, um, especially um, the sort of the larger ones um, and during even the construction um, phase that uses a lot of um, it's called piling um, and drilling. So there's going to be a lot of noise from that. Um, Um, question from Peter, there have been some reports of seals being disturbed by people trying to take selfies and has this happened at Walney? Um, well, hopefully not. Well, there shouldn't be because uh, there is no public access down at Walney. Um, so I don't think it would have. Um, but um, yeah, no, there, there shouldn't. I know um, what's quite good about the seal cam is that it does actually capture if anyone is kind of getting a bit too close. So as we saw um, 
in those pictures of the kayakers um, which who weren't meant to be there um, and there's that fisherman as well who was not meant to be there so um, it does capture um, and raise awareness when uh, when people do break the rules I guess. <laughs> Um, a question from Jeff, though I'm afraid I don't know the answer, is what changed at South Bournley that brought the seals? I um, unfortunately don't know that, but that's a real um, interesting question. Um, and I can try and find out and get back to you. If there's questions that I um, can't answer from the chat, I um, feel do feel free to email in and I will do my best to answer them. Um, but I will answer a couple more. Um. So Mark asked, are the seals nomadic or stay in the one place all year round? and have any other breeds ever been sighted around the UK of seals? Um, so um, they will tend to have their same haul out sites um, year round, but they will spend a lot longer over the winter months um, hauled out on land. Um, this is during when they're molting. Um, and to other breeds ever been sighted around the UK? No, I do not that I don't think so. No, the only um, species we do get is um, the grey seal and the common seal. Um, Graham has asked if there's any antagonism from local fishermen. Um, again, I'm not um, not too sure of that. Um, there shouldn't be, but uh, I'm not aware aware of that. Um, that's another thing I can find out. I think I'm going to wrap it up there for now, though, and. Um, Please do tune in um, on the 30th of November and I'll give you um, a bit of a closer look at the set seals at South Walney. Um, thank you ever so much for joining me this evening. And um, if, if you have any more questions that I haven't answered um, and I haven't managed to get round to, I am very happy to answer them through email. So please do email in. Um, Thank you. Uh, you can get me at um, Georgia DJC at Cumbria Wildlife Trust.org.uk. Um, and I'm very happy to answer any questions. Um, but hopefully, see you on the 30th of November. Um, and thank you very much for joining me.